So in today's podcast, we have on Eric Galasso. Uh, if you don't know him by that name, you probably know him as Epic Eric. Um, you've seen him on either his own personal social media or you've seen him on Smallmouth Crush uh, over with Travis Manson. And this duo of these guys is just incredible. They smash fish. They know what they're doing. Um, Eric is also a big crankbait hoarder, collector, whatever you want to call it. The guy's, the guy's awesome. Uh, so I'm excited to have him on it and talk about different things today. All right, we're recording now. All Good. right, cool. For, for people listening and joining, we just had like a crazy 13-minute <laughs> spiel about so many different avenues. And I, was I, know. Like, I just had to come to a halt. <laughs> like you need to get this on the podcast because let's do it <laughs> people love this stuff but yeah awesome before we before we redo and like rejoin that conversation we were just yeah. having yeah for people listening and for myself talk a little bit about who got you into fishing and how sure. you kind of started in that whole story yeah man i mean i'm going in the way back machine dude it, you know back to my childhood uh my my dad and my mom uh got me into fishing as a young little little wee lad i can remember going to one of those like uh trout ponds where you paid you know a dollar a trout and you got to catch them i have a picture somewhere around here in, in my bass lab that uh, me holding up some trout on a stringer i think i actually might have put it on my instagram <laughs> and so um that just lit the fire man getting that bite you know feeling the tap on that line and then catching a fish and keeping them and then coming home and cooking them uh, just nothing like it and then you know growing up in the neighborhood i moved to uh the area where i live in like 66 and um Fishing the local ponds, the golf course ponds. I was a paper boy growing up, and literally, I would load up my paper paper out, do my deliveries. I'd have my tackle box bungee to that bike with one rod, and uh-huh. I would go fishing at the front lake in my community and go fishing for bass. And just remember some of the epic catches that I had, you know, like reading an article in Bassmasters magazine. By the way, I'm a life member. I paid $150 for a lifetime subscription I think when I was 14. So that's, I'm, I don't mind telling the viewers I'm 57, dude. So that's, that's, you know, I got my value out of that. You made your money's worth. I made my money's worth, man. People are like, you spent 150. Yeah. I said lifetime member, man. So yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So I got, I got into baits way back then reading articles, you know, collecting Bagley's in the seventies. You know, I remember one time I read an article about cheap trailers using a strip of a white trash bag in replacement of pork and so i cut these little strips exactly like in the shape of the uh oh here you go i I actually just found these the bass strips that you know if you're an uncle josh guy yeah it's just a white bass strip you know a lot of people use them for bucktails and put it on the back of a johnson silver silver minnow and dude caught like a four pounder (laughs) yeah just rolling a silver minnow on top and that trash bag trailer Dude, it looks so good, and a bass agreed, man. So stuff like that, you know. A, another experience thrown, and me and Travis just did on Smallmouth Crush a, a little episode on inline spinners. Yeah, yeah. They used a Meps That's number cool. zero silver spinner during a cold front and slow rolled that thing. And I remember I caught fourteen bass in a little ditch at this lake in the front of my community, up to about four pounds. Crazy. Dude, th- this is exactly why. Yeah. When I'm looking for prospective people to bring on that I want yeah. to talk to and, and I yeah. think it'll be an interesting conversation, this is exactly why I wanted to bring you on here because right on, I, I would learn a lot, but also it's just the stories and the oh, t- the anecdotal stuff. I, I got some stories, man. It's all about the baits, it's yeah. all about different people that I fish with. I've been in a lot of different boats over the years. I'm in different boats now. We can talk about that, but oh. I'm all I'm always looking to learn and I'm always looking to share. So, yeah, yeah. This is, I'm, yeah, I'm totally 100%. into it. Well, dude. I definitely I want to get into this tack wall behind you. But I'm going to put it off because <laughs> my mind is going nuts looking at all the different ones. Dude, uh, it's crazy. I've got like a, I told Travis, I probably have a decade worth of content down here. I literally could run a bait show channel for 24 you have, you have hours. A tackle shop right there. I mean, because people Bass geek Pro. out. Oh, that's just half of it, man. That ain't nothing <laughs> compared to what's in the three other rooms in the house. So yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I could fill a garage. That's a, a big one. Incredible. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Dude, well, dude, I, I tell you, I'm a huge fan of you and Travis and you guys' little your, your dissection of baits and techniques and styles yeah. of fishing. I love it because I learn a lot. I know a lot of people yeah. from it. Good. Uh, but we had just gotten done with a conversation. We were talking about, one, how I got started with Douglas Rods and how we got to I'm moving yeah. to Syracuse. And that brought up a conversation about Lake Ontario and how mm. you caught this mega 
you know, tell, tell us the story. Dude, it was crazy. So it was my first time on a Great Lake. So Travis and I, you know, I, I knew a little bit more about the Upper Bay at the time than Travis did. And so we met at a tournament and then, you know, he started his YouTube channel. He's like, dude, you want to go out? And I'm like, yeah, man, let's let's go Upper Bay. It's pre-spawn. And so we got in, you know, two weeks in a row, just mega bags, like 24 pound bags. It was, and I lost one that was about seven and I was cranking and he, he was cranking. Then I threw a chatterbait and called a giant, you know? So anyway, he goes, come up to Ontario. And I'm like, dude, I'm not a big water guy. I don't want any six foot rollers out there. Still, I stayed in the middle of the boat almost the whole time, but <laughs> we caught some fish out like where he normally likes to go. But it was nothing spectacular. Hers. I'm still having fun because I'm in a place that I've never been. Yeah. We roll back in. I'm like, dude, you know, like this is late winter. Don't like bait fish start to migrate into the creeks. And so he goes, well, there's the Black River. I'm like, let's just go to the mouth and see what happens. Soon as we got to the mouth of the Black River, these massive pods of bait fish started showing up and we got into the smallies. So, of course, I'm throwing a gajo spirit shad. Credit to Travis. I've yeah. never fished that bait. Yeah. Uh, haven't done a ton of smallmouth fishing. I'm in the back. He's in the front. He's looking at his units. He's telling me, you know, when to drop. I'm kind of getting the concept. And, you know, had my G Loomis, man. We were both using the same rig. I just got yeah. the big bike, dude. But, man, when I saw that fish, and it's on video, too. I mean, I'm like, that. I, I'm like thinking that's an eight-pound fish. <laughs> And yeah. anyway, so when I finally hoisted it up, man, I'm like, we got to weigh this thing. And he's like, dude. And so we did. And he wasn't sure about the scale in terms of how it was like set, whether he was doing ounces or he had some other like, was it kilograms? I don't even know, man, but yeah. he was sketchy. Yeah. Pounds, pounds, ounces or something. Totally, totally thought it was a seven and a half plus fish. Uh, but anyway, came came out. It was just shy of seven. But you look at you look at it on film. It looks so much bigger. Is this on you know, Travis's channel? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. Have, I'm gonna yeah. have to link it. Watch yeah. it and then link it. Okay, you do, man. It's it's the Lake Ontario. I'll I'll try to find it if you can, because yeah. you know he's got quite a quite a number of videos. So yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And our first okay. one was epic day on the water. That's the first time I met him. First time we ever fished together oh. uh, for, for bass, and it was just unbelievable, unbelievable. Yes. Lake Ontario, man, dude, it is a gold mine, and not many people fish it though for bass. Yeah, true, right? Not a lot yeah. of people do. He's it's, all he's all about those Great Lakes, man. That's where he wants to be for sure. That's where the that's where you find the megas, dude. That's yeah, like where you get them, you know. Yeah, he, he's gonna be he's up there for like a few fish. months this year, man. It's crazy. So I'm gonna go up there and see. We're gonna film some more this year. So yeah, I'm excited when, when you two get together. That's when you know you're going to Hammertown. You know, yeah, you guys will find them one way or another. We catch some big fish together, man. I've been on a little bit of a big fish tear. I broke my personal personal best for smallmouth with him. I think my prior best was like a five and a half. Uh, Billy yeah. Kramer is a you know he's a legendary guide on the on the yeah. Potomac down here. He's won a ton of tournaments, boats, and always plays well. So we last year kind of got together and fished the Battle of the Border. His regular partner wasn't in town. We came in third, knocked on the door for the win, and that's the 50 best teams in Virginia and Maryland. Wow. And of course, he we practiced together, right? And we had very specific baits that they were chewing on. And he goes, "Don't bring anything funky." And you know me, I'm bringing something funky, man. <laughs> Literally, I didn't even tell him I had. First cast, I threw a hubs chub, and I cracked a big one, man. First freaking cast. And he, and he goes, what the hell is that? And I go, it's a hubs chub, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. I got one back here, man. It's not the color I threw. But, dude, you know, I, I took the cheap hooks off. That's the hub chubs right there. This uh -huh. thing is noisy. It's got a propeller on the back. I don't know. If, can, oh, yeah. There you go. And three hooks, man. Yeah. But it splashed and splits, and it's it's super loud. Yeah, I threw a jet black one, and I caught several fish. And he goes, "You got any more?" I'm like, "Nah, man, I brought one." I brought one. <laughs> so, yeah. You told me to limit the funky. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm always looking for something funky and different, man. So yeah, that's when, sweet. When me and Travis get together, it's it's good. But anyway, I, I broke my PB uh, in a tournament uh, with my other partner, Scooter Lily, a seven nine three out of a brush pile on the Roanoke. We were sitting on like a twelve pound limit. It took us to seventeen. Which was cool when it checked. Yeah, like right up to yeah. And that was like what an epic battle, man. I almost didn't get that fish out. I was definitely hung. And I just let off tension. That baby, she swam out. And when that thing came up on I me, mean, that's an eight pounder. It was just shy of eight, seven, nine, three. Yeah. I mean, talk yeah, it is an eight pounder at that point. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So and um, he, he's a hammer too. 
Scooter's a hammer. Yeah, Scooter's a hammer. I met him. Um, I fished with Brian Breezemeister down in Region 7, and we had a show on River Tournament. And he works for IBM, and he couldn't make it for practice. And I'm like, ah, oh, damn, man, I didn't bring my boat. So I'm like stuck in North Carolina. I'm not driving home to get my boat five and a half hours. So I'm like, I'll call a guy. So I call around with like three guides and he calls me back. Another guy calls me back. I like him more. And he goes, look, there's a catch. I I got a bay boat. My bass boat's in the shop. And I'm like a bay boat. He goes, yeah, with a T top. And uh, it's a saltwater boat that I do. I'm like, let's go, man. The dude was like 110 degrees. The dude shows up with three rods and he goes, but I'm probably going to use two, two packs of worms a box of poppers and, and bango lures, and that's it. It only uses two. Doesn't even bring out the bango lure. And, <laughs> and, and you know me, I got 17 rods and like yep. a bag, and he's just geeking out on my shit. And, man, we just hit it off. And so I've, I've developed a relationship with him and started to fish tournaments. And we were in the lead for our team trail last year with Angler's Choice, and, and we, we fell the last tournament of the year mm. to th- place but hey man it was a great finish top three out of like yeah. know, close yeah. to 200 yeah, I that, yeah. no like, no 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 no. he's yeah. a striper guy too isn't he He is yeah he's he's yeah. doing his striper thing right now on the roanoke river he's uh he's he's all about it man he's got an accomplished resume too in bass fishing for sure that oh, dude's a stud. he's a power fisherman never picked up a spinning rod in a tournament with me and i'm back there with a spinning rod <laughs> at uh 793 with him and then another year caught a five and change to win the bojangles in the last 30 minutes of the tournament actually awesome. about 10 minutes to go throwing a big net and a brush pile or actually a, a, a lay down so yeah it's been cool man but you know two hours before that i was flipping 50 pound braid with him so you know <laughs> it, cool stories man cool Jack stories. Those trades yeah he he's yeah. seen the power of finesse it's true yeah he's seen it make a difference yeah so let me ask you this then, you know, you're doing yeah. all these tournaments. When did that start? When did the tournament life start for you? Man, so uh, way back in the day, um, is I had a I had an aluminum bass boat, but I wasn't really confident in some of the areas that, you know, this uh, club called Bank and Boat Bassmasters. Um, so I said, you know what, I'll enter as a co-angler. And so they used to fish pond tournaments. And the cool part about this club is they would break for lunch. So I'm fishing. This is my first year bass fishing tournaments. And I'm uh, fishing with this guy named Scott. And then that was, you know, my first tournament with Scott. I caught the big bass of the tournament. It was pretty cool. So I got a plaque and a check. And then the next tournament, I got paired up with Skip, who was a postman. I don't remember his last name, but he delivered mail. And uh, he was the number one guy in the club. And we're fishing Parker's Pond on the Eastern Shore. And I had a limit in the boat at lunch. And so all the boats are together. Like, and we're eating sandwiches. And I had a big fish in the well, like five and change. And uh, people are like, let's see, let's see the big bass. Who's got a big? I got, I got a five and change. And they go, hold it up. I'm like, no, nah, I want to leave him in the live well. Skip goes, I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> this is the guy that's fishing with me. He gets my fish out of live well, holds it up, and loses it. It hits the deck and bounces into the water. He ends up beating me. I don't replace the five and up by like not much. And I'm like, you guys aren't going to count that. That fish was it. No, you lost it. I didn't lose it. Skip lost it. I, I didn't want to pick it And you believe that, man? So I got I second place. Pissed. I was pissed, man. But I think, you know, Skip didn't let me put it to him in the back of the boat there. Remember, I was throwing a bushwhacker spinnerbait, man. Bushwhacker. Oh, my God. Old school stuff, man. Old school. So that was my that was my entry into tournament. Oof. So I only stayed with him about a year. And then um, I didn't do much tournament, but I started getting into the Potomac River. Mm-hmm. Bought my... Uh, my first bass boat was a uh, Bass Pro Shop Johnny Morris aluminum jobby, man. Oh. Yeah, and learned the river that way. Hired a couple guides just to show me, because there's a lot of obstructions up there, especially north in D.C. That's where I kind of focused, the hardcover junkie. A lot of plastics back in the day. So I fished with Glenn Peacock, Billy Kramer, mm-hmm. uh, Richard Waiter. Got to know those guys. I'd jump in a tournament or two with them. And then uh, stepped up to my first boat, which was a, a, a Super Pro. I rode in it in the 1996 uh, BP Top 100. And uh, sitting in fourth place after day one, rode on that Super Pro. Billy Kramer drove that boat, too. And I ended up buying Bill's boat after that tournament because I liked the way it ran. And um, ended up 12th, but I had a chance to win that tournament. Had some malfunctions. I didn't fish clean. And uh, but really learned a ton. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was the only 
I was the only amateur to catch a limit every day in that tournament. That was pretty cool. I think I had 27 11 for three. Yeah, three days. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was it was it was a good experience, man. So then I got into some local clubs, yeah. Seed Owners Club. Uh, my first year, I got out of bass fishing for about 10 years, if you could believe that. I'd fish still, but I got heavy into trout fishing. So tying my own flies. Uh, I was raising a family, running a business. Got out of the tournament scene a little bit, but uh, got back into it in uh, 2007 and won Rookie of the Year uh, with Skeeter Owners Club. And then the next year, I came in second place to Ed Riley, who was Mr. Bass. But uh, yeah, and then just started fishing team tournaments more recently, man. Had an experience in Skeeter Owners Club where we fished. It was really bad weather. Two tornadoes touched down. One above us in D.C. and one down in Southern Maryland. I got stuck trying to get off the water in a squall that the tornado spawned. And I was on the water alone. GPS was locked up because my buttons were so waterlogged. I had no mapping. Shut oh down God. in the middle of the river in about 75 mile an hour winds with lightning. And I'm like, man, this is it. I'm dead. Oh <laughs> and so... God. I'm like, if I go, I'm going with a teammate. <laughs> I'm not going alone. So that was it. So then I just started fishing team tournaments, man. And I'm really into the team scene. I yeah. like I like the whole camaraderie behind it. I like planning with a partner. I like winning with a partner, losing with a partner. I just I just have way more fun. I'm not yeah, I don't have the ego drive anymore to be the man on the front of the boat doing it, doing the thing, you know? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just a whole it's a new experience for me, and I've been doing it hard couple different trails and loving it loving it yeah Love. yeah yeah I, i've done it a little bit um i probably only fished uh, maybe five six uh tournaments out of a boat Both yeah seen is in a kayak that's oh I, that's cool man. That. Man, uh, that's catching on big right it's it's getting huge yeah um and i've done pretty well like i don't think my my state trail we get probably 60 you know 50 to 60 guys a tournament which is average pretty good for new york that's a and, lot. Uh, That's for a kayak, lot for any think, tournament, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't think, I mean, I did well. I, I don't think I finished worse than seventh, and then... Um, Dude, that's extraordinary. There's there's one tournament, like, a year that they do. It's like a partner tournament. Where it's like you and another guy in a kayak, and you can add your scores up. So oh, it's like cool. your longest three fish. Oh, it's like that's cool. the funnest one in my mind because you get to work with a buddy and kind of strategize, like, all right, you go look for smallmouth. I'll go yeah. look for largemouth. That's Whoever's so cool. doesn't plan out. We'll just combine forces, you know, that kind of that's thing. That's cool. See, yeah. I, that, that's what I'm, I love that aspect of it. You know, the whole getting your gear ready, traveling together, oh, yeah. planning together, you know, fishing your strengths and, you know, doing something different or doing the same thing if you're really on the meat, you know oh, what yeah. I mean? And all those decisions that make up, you know, it's, it's fun. 100%. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, my buddy and I, Nate Weisslaw, who is now a, he's a hammer. He's out of SUNY ESF. He's a oh, yeah. fisherman over there. And, uh, yeah. I got spoiled. Uh, this this we've dropped twenty two pounds in our first ever bass tournament on Canisius Lake. <laughs> That's we huge. That. Yeah, yeah. We were sitting there and practice and practice the day before and like we were we're dumb, young and dumb. So yeah, yeah. We're we're, it's, we're catching everything during practice. We're not like sure. taking fish off or anything. <laughs> we're going out fishing. Like we probably caught like forty fish during practice and we're sitting oh there like yeah, God. like great plan. Like we dropped twenty pounds in practice. We're like like we never even think that maybe we'd be screwing up what yeah. we like what we'd have. <laughs> And we came back the next day and we're like, there's no fish here. Like, what happened? Like, our plan, like, it's all gone. <laughs> and then a thunderstorm rolled through and we're like, all right, let's, I guess, like, because one thing we always were big on was, like, watching, like, you know, the Ikes and, and stuff. And sure. thing that he had for advice was, you know, go back to basics. And when yeah. you slump, go back to basics. And Glacier Lakes in New York are big, just big bowls of grass. Yeah. So we're just like, you know, post frontal. Let's go weightless Senkos. I know it's cheesy, oh, yeah. but let's just do it. Oh, my God. Four-pounder, five-pounder. Wow. Four pounder, like, rack them up. So wow. We're like, and they're like, this isn't happening. So That's awesome. Like, and all high and mighty, and we're, like, walking around like we're the yeah, man. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in the highs and lows of bass fishing, dude. Yeah. There was many lows afterwards, but it was a good first high. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been there both, man. I've been spanked, and I've won, and, you know, every, everywhere in the middle, so. 100%. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. It's good stuff when a plan works out. There's no question about yeah. it. Yeah. And then when you adjust, right? Yeah. And you pivot, you know, and you get that on the water thought that Things the producers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's what it's all about right there. Decisions. 
that I think honestly that's a better feeling is when you kind of make that adjustment and it works 100%. rather than coming in today and your plan just working out entirely. Totally, man. That, that adversary adversity feeling that is. That's mm-hmm. Oh, you can panic. You can get you get spun out a little bit, man. It's there's oh, no yeah. question about it. So yeah, nice. I mean, yeah. I had a championship with my buddy Mike Draper. We fished a club called Never on Sunday, and um, they fished on Wednesdays. Yep. And so, because of the business I run, I can fish on Wednesdays, and I like it. It's a team format. And so, you know, I used to fish it with Johnny Ingram. He got out of it, and so picked up another partner. But I've won three championships. I don't fish it anymore, but I really liked it because it was a variety of you know rivers and lakes took you around but uh i had i had gone out and practiced without mike and i found these fish in november you know they were migrating back they were coming off the flats which is heavy on the susquehanna grass flats and these bigger fish started to get just dialed into the shad and they only wanted a big profile white spinner bait Mm. that was the bigger bite and um you know early in the game i put a couple fish good ones in the boat you know four four plus pounders uh we ended up with 22 six the win and uh, Mike had a brand new spinnerbait crack. Literally, the head came off and brought up the blades like t- 15 feet from the boat. I saw the fish. This would probably been our biggest fish of the day. And, dude, he started, like, geeking out, man, like, just cracking his rod on my boat. And I'm like, dude, you're going to need that rod because we're, we're throwing spinnerbaits. Yeah. And, uh, he, you know, he breathed and settled down. He caught a good fish later in the day to get back in the game. But it was kind of nice, man, that, uh, you know, that the practice plan worked out. Yeah. And those fish yeah. just kept pouring off the flats and reloading on that channel swing bank because that's all it was. It was classic pattern for fall. And, you know, we'd see people throwing crankbaits and they did not want a small bait. If you weren't throwing a big freaking spinner bait, half ounce with a nice juicy trailer in the trailer, you weren't getting a bite. I mean, a, a bigger bite. You were catching the little rats as yeah. well. And that's all they wanted. That's it's slow it's, rolled. It's, I mean, slow no rolled. Freedom. Oh yes. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Incredible. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah. So you've known Travis for obviously a long time and that's where I'm sure a yep. lot of people have gotten your name from is from sure. his channel. Cause he has a good, a decent following. Yeah, he does. Uh, so when did you kind of hop in on the YouTube game with him? So it's, it's, it's wild, man. So we met each other. I was fishing team tournaments up off of um, the Northeast river, which is part of the Susquehanna flats fishery. And, um, he was paired up with a guy, I think he might have fished and it was in business at the time with a guy named Jack Rinkers. Travis worked for him as a sales guy, you know, selling HVAC. And he had another buddy, Jimmy Steiner there. He was doing the same thing. And so I just kind of got into that crowd and um, we kind of hit it off. And, you know, he invited me to come out and shoot one video. And that's literally the first video we had together was just stupid. And I think he saw I had some knowledge, especially in the crankbait game. That really wasn't a big part of his arsenal, and it intrigued him. You know, I'm, I started talking about balsa baits, and then he took me out in November, and I'm throwing a flat-sided balsa, and just, I mean, I got to work on those fish, man. And he's like, you got to show me, you know. And, you know, shad wraps and how I weight the baits to, to make them, you know, suspend or even slowly sink. And, you know, where I, where I throw away to crank bait. I don't think many people have seen anybody do that. You know, a balsa bait in particular. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that bait, you know, when it hits an obstruction, it's fall, you know, I'm, I'm dragging it, or maybe it's even early winter, and they get off the shad and they're on the craw or spring, Yeah, you know, eight-pound test on a spinning rod, and I'm going on community holes and catching fish. So the fish live there, and the reason they're community holes is because they hold fish. Yeah. There's more fish there than you know or think, and it's your job to figure out what's the subtlety that you can use or huh. a bait that's different. And and go behind people, you know, after that bank's been cranked, you know, with still catch them. Yeah, exactly. And still catch them because your crankbait looks different, is doing something different. Yeah. And you're triggering the bite. Yeah. So so I think he 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 I maybe he he realized you could probably you you'd have to ask him, but I, I think that's what it was. I love baits and you know, we just had fun. He's a good straight man. I'm a goofball, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it works, man. The it's chemistry fun works. Mix. We have fun, man. We laugh a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I met him. I mean, I've, I've watched his channel for, I don't know, a long time. I've been, yeah. I mean, I've had my YouTube channel for probably four years. And it's just been kind of a thing where I didn't really post consistently until a few months ago when yeah. I got out of Notre Dame is when I've been yeah. posting almost every single day. And I've been just watching consistently. He's one I'd watch because I learn a lot from him. Yeah. Tournament fisherman, and I was like, yeah. that's what I was into. 
So and, that, and that's obviously where I discovered you. And I was like, these guys, like, they're, they smash. Like, they, they, they work well together. Yeah. And uh, I, I got to, at the Niagara Fishing Expo a few weeks ago, that was when I yeah. actually first got to actually meet him and talk to him. Oh, cool. I sat in on one of his seminars, and that's when I learned he was originally like a walleye guy. And I was like, yeah, right. I yep. never had any idea. And he's like, yeah, I had no idea what I was doing whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of talked about it, how he's such a finesse fisherman. He's like a drop yeah. shot. Yeah. yeah. That's yep. one of my favorite videos of you guys is you guys using uh, – it was like the red versus the yellow, like the neon heads for – Oh, yeah. I brought I those up to New York. I smashed them. <laughs> like, that was crazy, dude. So I broke those out, and he was like stoked that I brought them because – you know, there's a great, if you're a finesse guy, there's a great forum on, um, uh, what the heck, in Fisherman. It's yeah. called Midwest Finesse. Midwest. And so there's a forum. Okay. And these guys are geeky about finesse. Yeah. And I believe in it. I've seen way too many examples where finesse fishing rules the day. And a lot of guys won't put a spinner rod in their hand. It's the right tool for the right job. Look, yeah. man, if you can get them power fishing, I'd love the chunk and wine like the best of them. But if I can get him finesse fishing when nothing else is working, I'm I'm stoked about it. So yeah. I brought I've been I had those with me and I brought them up to New York. And I'm like, dude, let's roll these out, man. And he goes, Where'd you get those? And I'm like, you gotta order them straight from the Z Man. I'd never seen them anywhere except yeah. for on the Z Man. And I read an article in Midwest Finesse. Was it Ned? Ned, yeah, Ned Katie, the guy that, you know, basically yeah. gets credited with the Ned rig. Yeah. And um they caught like the record number of fish and it was on not a net head it was the z-man finesse worm and it was i believe on a red head so i said yeah let's compare red and chartreuse and see if it matters and which one outperforms the other so yeah oh. it was it was fun to do as a, as an experiment you know same stretch of water we're making basically the same cast it's the same weight head we're using a small little net. It's the yoga pants, same color. So we're trying to, you know, same size leader. So you can't say, you know, oh, you were getting a better sink rate. Your bait was floating more naturally. Everything was equal. So yeah. it's cool. It's cool to test that. I I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. A lot of people don't buy into it, but I don't care. I'm sold. <laughs> and I like it's to test small it. Small details, you know, that can help you in certain situations. It doesn't mean it's going to work every single day. Nope. No, it's just certain situations, you know. Truly not, man. I mean, yeah. I was out. I was out with uh, Pete Gluzik one time. I hired him to do a bass class on the Upper Bay, you know, the Dean, Bass University. And so we went out for a day, and there was a guy on the boat that had this product called Hat Can. And so it was basically like a GoPro in the brim of your hat, and he was trying to, like, really launch things. And so Pete said, you want to come out? Said, yeah, dude, let, let's go. So I I'd, I'd found the Chatterbait before the Jackhammer ever came to America. I mean, I'm talking years ago. Yeah. And I was throwing, uh, it was an Imakatsu bait. It's called the Mogula Monster Moth Chatter. And it's a hunting chatter bait. Literally hunting actions built in. This thing will go like this and pop out, come back to center, and then pop out to the other side. And it triggers bites. You don't have to impart any rod action on it. Yeah. You know, you're still snapping it out of grass, obviously, but it yeah. hunts naturally. Dude, he's throwing a regular Z-Man chatter bait. I'm throwing this chatter bait. And I'm scoring bass everywhere we go. And he is out of his mind he hadn't caught one on the chatterbait yet and i am stoning him and i'm the third guy in the boat he's up front hat cam guys in the middle and i'm on the back deck <laughs> so i'm getting third cast at all available cover and uh finally he goes give me your rod i can't take it anymore and he, we're on carpenter's point in the upper bay he went 150 yards and he caught two bass and i and we both looked at each other and we went see sometimes it is the bait yeah too many anecdotal stories like that, man. Too, too many anecdotal stories like that. Yeah. Yep. I, my my fishing career has been a constant struggle of that, but also keeping it simple because for me, I'm that kind of personality where it's like squirrel. Like, you yeah, know, oh, yeah. I'm all over the place where it's like, I don't oh, yeah. know. Like, yeah. I, it's, it, it's just, it, at the end of the day, it comes down to just experience, you know? And that's what I, it, I, I agree. The right tool for the right job, you know, I mean, yeah. No question about it. I mean, if you it, like, if you don't have a chatterbait in your hand on any of these tidal rivers in the early spring, you're missing out. And I don't really yeah. care what brand it is, what if it hunts or it doesn't. If you're throwing a chatterbait, you're gonna get bit. Yeah. You know, and but so, you know me, I gotta find a chatterbait that does something different. If that's yeah. what they're into. <laughs> you know? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and yeah. Then up here in New York, the the glacier lakes that I'm used to fishing, like I said earlier, they're just big bowls. Yeah. Bowls of grass. There's not a. I mean, you can find rock piles. There are rock sure. piles, and you have to like really put in your time to find them sure. but for the majority 
it's a lot of just grass. So Man. for a lot of us guys that just fish primarily finger lakes, you don't really fish crankbaits much unless it's like a lipless. Sure. You can, you can, you know, crank, you know, like weed lines and whatnot. Sure. But majority of the time, like a chatterbait or a spinnerbait is a lot of what you're throwing, you know, shallow flats and different things like that. Right on. So it's like when it comes to crankbaits, I am so stupid. I don't yeah. know what to do. Like it's lipless. Yeah. I know I know my way around a lipless, but sure. like. Sure, sure. Like deep cranking, I maybe have caught two fish in my life. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, I, that's just for where you live and what you're fishing, right? I mean, yeah. I don't throw many deep cranks because I'm fishing tidal water. And, you know, early spring, it's 8 to 10 foot. You know, when I get on the water, that's the pre-spawn fish. They're there. There's no 20 foot holes to crank that I know of. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not big into the deep cranking game. I've never had to do it. Maybe a DT10, maybe a 14 if I'm trying to grind something. Um, but mostly it's a shallow water deal, six to eight foot. So, you know, my crankbait knowledge stops, you know, when I start to go to the deeper crankbaits. I went out to um, I bid on two trips on eBay. For the future of fishing foundation it's about raising money for kids to get them into fishing hook them early kind of like the ike foundation yeah, yeah um and so i bid on a trip with uh matt lee and Juan, and bid on a trip with uh larry nixon and i'm like dude uh, it was basically the fee for a guide day on the water fishing with a legend and a young gun so yeah. matt lee for gunnersville and larry nixon on bull shoals so i drove out to bull shoals to fix fish with larry man what an epic day that was really, really cool. But th the point of this story is the deep crank. And so I get to Gunnersville, and Matt's like, you ever thrown a 6XD? And I'm like, hell no, man, but let's do it. <laughs> I mean, it, it was so crazy. We caught a mega sack, but not on the 6XD. We caught a couple on it. I was throwing a Nico with him. Um, caught some big fish on the Nico. Uh, and it caught the biggest fish of the trip uh, on a Talon swim bait he gave me. Okay. And dude, it caught like a a gagger, man. It was unbelievable. That was pretty cool. Caught that on film. And uh, but throwing that six XD, I did not have the right setup, man. My arms, I'm like, and burning it. I mean, like reeling as fast as you could, chucking this monster crankbait out there. You know, I didn't have the right gear ratio. I was working way too hard to try to burn it. But it's pretty cool. I think I caught the fish on a five XD anyway. But uh, that 6XD was just so giant. I'm like, what in the hell is this bait, man, all about? It's nuts. But um, that was my first introduction to deep crank and ledge fishing proper. You yeah. Know? Pretty yeah. cool to watch them work as electronics and get to know them. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And that's one thing I'm really trying to dwell into. Um, but as like a kayak angler, you can't put four graphs on your boat. You're, you're, no. You're graph, and it's not going to be that big. I mean, some guys run like a Solix 12, and you're sitting there. It's like you can watch. You're watching TV on your kayak. Pretty wow. Much. That's crazy, man. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you got space limitations too. That's why you got to keep it simple. Exactly. So exactly. I hear you got to have multi-purpose rods, you know. But uh, there's just those proven baits, man. That if I was forced to, I would, I yeah. would stick with. Just through yeah. my years of experience, I know what I'd flip for finesse. You know, if I had to downsize, it'd be a freaking Zoom centipede. You know, on ten or twelve pound co poly, they eat that green pumpkin centipede across the country. Dip that tail, chartreuse, orange, or red, and you're golden with an eighth ounce or three sixteen ounce. You will not be sorry. I told you that one. So what? What zoom centipede? I don't think. Oh I yeah, Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's a limit getter, dude. That. Wow. Oh oh my god, dude! For a do nothing stupid bait with a two out, you know, pick your favorite two out hook and pegged or unpegged, however you like to fish it. Yeah, green pumpkin centipede. It's all you need. You fit. Why do you fish a co polymer? Um, well, you could fish fluoro. Copoly just is, you know, super abrasion resistant. It's cheaper. Um, uh, my okay. buddies fish it, you know, but I probably throw it on more fluoro than yeah. Okay. But I, that I how I, certain that's reasons. how I started throwing it. Now I, I would throw it on fluoro now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, I was like, all right, like you said copoly. All right, now I can, I need to get my notebook out. Why no, 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 don't no no, just just stick with the braid to fluoro, you'll be good, man. Yeah. Braid to fluoro, you're good. Yeah. I mean, but that if you need five fish in the well. It's ridiculous. Okay. And you could drop shot that bait, catches them on, you know, absolutely. You can wacky rig it. Yep. Good Everything. Me. That's it's just so versatile. About four inches long, crazy amount of action. I don't know why it gets bit, but it does. And on a jig head, you know, just on a shaky jig, if you can find a jig head that fits the bait, it's stupid. It's accounted for so many big fish, so many limits. It's nuts. Yeah, it makes me reminds me of or the uh, what is it the Lake Trophy lure the ring fry? Or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah 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 yeah. I watched a, a a video. Of, a double ringer. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I watched a video. I'm, I'm sure you know Mikey Balls down. Yeah, of course. Thing. He wacky rigs a ring fry on a jig. Yep. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> yeah, but it works. I don't know why. It's it's something that's like, like I want to try it, but at the same time, like it's it seems stupid, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but it's I know. Like, I, I you just gotta suck it up and try it. And try so you, it, right? Until so you get that first bite, you always think it's stupid. Yep. You know? No question about it, man. No question yeah. about it. And that was me three years ago about the whole swim bait movement, you know, oh, yeah. with, you know, six plus inch swim baits and paddle tails, glide baits, whatever. Sure, sure. And I look over to my right and I have a huge Plano box full of all mag drafts from four oh, yeah. to 10 inches, you know, like. Yep, yep. Yeah. I uh, hate, hate that I'm in, getting into this swim. I'm trying to like resist getting into I know, it. man. It's so expensive. I uh, dude, it's cr- it's a crazy thing though. So there's a kid, college athlete. He grew up in my neighborhood. He was part of a little performance bass fishing team. The kids' side of it, I knew his dad, Mike yeah. Austin Deary, dream catchers fishing. You can see you know, some of his vids on YouTube. Yeah. So he got drafted, not drafted. He got uh, recruited to play uh, ball at Western Carolina, and got injured his freshman year. Got injured his sophomore year, and they pulled his scholarship. And the yeah. dude was literally he was going to the bigs. He he was the size skill level to be able to be drafted and he was just <laughs> depressed like lost because baseball was his life rightfully so. also loved bass fishing so we would talk a lot when he was at school i'm like dude you love bass fishing as much as anything i said why don't you take an eye to go pro and he started a club there and became the president of his western carolina university bass club yeah and i had when he came home for christmas he was kind of down in the dumps and i saw him i said dude you got to watch this if you haven't watched this video, you got to buy the DVD. I know how that's old school, but I wish they could. I wish they sold the streaming version. It's called Southern Trout Eaters. Matt okay. Peters, have you seen it? I think I've heard of this. I think I watched. I listened to a podcast about these. There's a podcast, but you have to buy the DVD. It's yeah, I, unbelievable. I, I, yeah. So I'm watching this going, what? I don't even know how I found it, but I'm like, Austin, you got to watch this. He went out of his mind. He goes, the lakes where these guys are fishing in pursuit of lake records and state records are 45 minutes from his school. <laughs> so he goes, I live here. Chateau, Glenville. These guys are throwing Nazuma rats, 22nd century. These are giant rat swim baits. They're yeah. throwing the big glides. They're throwing the Huddlestons. They're throwing the triple trouts. All that stuff, right? Yeah. Before it became popular. Before you anybody yeah. ever heard about it, these guys were doing those things down there. So... I bought a few big baits and um, Austin got into it and his partner was a big bait guy too. So they got into throwing big swim baits. It's a tool for sure. Is it a tournament tool? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't spend a lot of time in tournaments. I spend time in practice finding big fish with it. So yeah. we fished a big bass tour event down at Smith Mountain Lake. So, uh, you know, you win a boat if you catch the big bass. And so he got this on video too. It was kind of cool. Um so that morning I caught like a, I don't know, five and change. That was a $300 fish or $400 fish. Can't remember. And then anyway, about 11 o'clock, you hear me on the, on the, on the DV or the, the GoPro going, man, it's about to go down in here, man. I can feel it. And he's throwing this big uh, glide bait. It's the, uh, I wonder if I got one. I don't have it. Nope. It's a Gancraft jointed claw. Have you ever okay. seen those? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the big one, 230. He chucks it by this black bass boat. And I think he calls. He goes, yeah, she's living under there right now, sunning herself. Man, he goes, I'm looking at my bait because I'm throwing I'm throwing a bait behind him. And he goes, dude, there's a giant. And so he starts doing that wacky twitch thing, making the bait kind of, you know, yeah. walking. And I watched the fish just go open its mouth and go, oh, it like sucked the back tail in. And he sets the hook literally 10 feet from the boat. It turns out, I think it's like a 6'8", and we get it in the net. And based on prior years, that 6'8 should have won. A uh, guy got like a 7 and change to win the boat, but that was a $1,000 fish. I threw a bait because he had another one. I've never seen so many big bass come out of docks and track that bait. So I'm like, all right. So that was a whole experience. Mm-hmm. And I had some big baits with me. <clears throat> I took that same bait in rainbow trout color to a lake in North Carolina that doesn't have any trout. And I told my buddy, I'm going to throw it. It's it's spawn. It's the spawn. So I said, I'm going to go locate the big fish we're going to catch. 
I didn't, I didn't go out to plan to catch any fish just to see where they were living. So I get to my first spot. I'm by the dam. My buddy's late. He's got his ranger. I'm in my skeeter. I'm alone. And I get to the first covered dock, first covered dock. I chuck it down aside. There's no boats in this dock, by the way. A four pounder comes out tracking the bait. Throw it to the next one. A six plus is tracking my bait. They're not interested in eating. They just come out. That's where they live. I'm like, what the fuck? So I go up the next row. Docks don't get any followers. I go along an edge where I think there could be some bass spawning. A five tracks it. She's on a bed. Mark it. Mark it. So I'm marking everywhere I find these fish. I'm calling my buddy going, you're not going to believe this. He goes, that's bullshit. He's like calling bullshit the whole time. This is Brian Breesmeister, by the way. I fish region seven with him. So he finally <laughs> dumps his boat in. He gets to me. I found a few more fish. He goes, and our boats are together in a cut by the dam yeah. with a lot of boat docks. I'm at the biggest boat dock at like a turn in a small little cove inside this little arm. And he goes, all right, let me see this dumb bait. <laughs> I throw the bait. When it lands, it sounds like a brick falling in the water. He laughs. He goes, that's just stupid. I go, isn't it? <laughs> and I go, watch what I could do with this bait. And so I'm kind of like, I, I'm doing, I'm throwing little funky moves in, in the middle of the retrieve. I, neither of us can see the bait. But when the bait gets close to the boat, I'm looking for my next cast. He goes, holy shit, there's a seven. And I look down and the seven is opening its mouth, charging the bait. I pull the bait away and he goes, that's unreal. First cast in front of him, I pulled a seven out of that dock and he goes, I'm sold. And I go, dude, I told you, I told you. So I caught a fish later that day. It was probably four, put the bait up, marked all of our spots. He went and did some practice in two. We came back. We caught a six and chains that I'd marked for big fish. And uh, we came in second place. Unreal. We didn't catch all the fish I marked, but we caught a few of the fish that I marked. I'm I'm so excited to throw yeah. baits and add it into the because it's like people say like you can catch giant fish but it catch. is an amazing search bait. One hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. I don't know what it is. It's just the biggest thing when you hear that giant bait splash. It's nuts. And then I fish Norman with Austin for a big bass tour and we throw no nothing but rats and I can't believe I did this. Of course we had the hooks on. I didn't bend my hooks in. I catch a bass that would have won us the tournament in the boat. Um, now, would I have caught that bass the next day? I don't know if he crashed the bait, but it was uh, it was a giant, man. And uh, my rat, for some reason, was getting bit like crazy that day. It had a yellow bell. It was a Nizuma rat. It was the medium size, but it's still a big bait. And yeah. he was throwing some custom wood ones that he, he had made down in the Carolinas. But it was really cool post-spawn wolf pack fish on lakes in the south or wherever you have bass that wolf pack their reaction to a rat's pretty violent yeah. it's crazy it's crazy spots down there large mouth top water rats are incredible at night for oh. actual, to actually catch them yeah oh god yeah like my buddy and i we would we found this um so canisius lake and i don't care if this gets out because night but night fishing is incredible not yeah. everyone's gonna do it so i don't care if no. this gets out canisius lake which i used to live five minutes from now wow. we about 30 minutes from still close by but um this lake was it the water got so dirty on uh, the summer and there's no grass like it was weird right. where it got like a week of really warm temperatures so grass started growing oh wow it went really cold so it killed it all so it was there was no grass in the summer oh, that's it crazy was really weird. but the only part that was grass was in the, the south end but it was just terrible terrible like our Tuesday nighters were usually 13 pounds for three fish. Wow. To eight pounds for, for three fish. Wow. It was like record lows. So guys are like frustrated. No one's fishing Canisius anymore because wow. of how bad it was fishing. Yeah. My buddy and I were like, like he had been in night fishing before and he's like threw it out there. He's like, yeah, I'm probably not good at night fishing though. I'm like, think about that. If they're not biting during the day, maybe it switches at night. So we tried it. We're like, screw it. We went yeah. out. We went out at like 9 p.m., wait till it gets dark. We're sitting there like, you know, 10, 10 30, 11 o'clock. We're like, this is getting old. Like, <laughs> it's we're in the pitch black. We're not seeing much. Yeah. We're not catching anything. We start hearing bait go a little bit on top. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And I'm starting to mark schools on my graph. And I look at him, and he goes, I'm like, do you hear what I hear? And he goes, he goes, dude, I see it in the moonlight. I see the bait fish going. 
We he throws a top water rat. I throw a, a whopper plopper. It's like a one thirty. Oh yeah, I get destroyed. Boy. He cool. gets destroyed. Ooh. Oh by, my god! By midnight, it sounded like like cannons going off about uh, bait getting destroyed uh, by you. And I have a video wow. on this. For if you listen to it, you oh, can hear everything going. Totally want to watch just, that. Four pounder, five pounder. Oh my like, god! The best part: it's middle of August, and you're catching twenty one inch smallmouth coming up in five foot of water. That's unbelievable, and they're violent. Oh the my strikes god, are Dude. violent. Because all you hear is the bait going, you hear your whopper popper, doo, 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 and then yeah. you doosh, and, it's, and then you just, uh, is there anything see, better? You feel it. You feel oh, it. Oh, that's nuts, man. I found out we went out four nights in a row. Like we even had work the next day. We were we don't we didn't Cares. care. We just went like <laughs> and sleep. We're like, this is sick. Like we got to do this. That's freaking yeah. awesome, man. Wow, dude, I love that, man. I love it. I love it. For anyone that's never done it, night fishing, it's so, oh, it's so much It's fun. crazy, dude. I went, uh, there's a lake in Western Maryland where I have a place uh, on the lake, and uh, it's a smallmouth fishery. It's not known for big smallmouth. They need to, like, put some structure and cover in it. Anyway, um, it's deep, it's clear, it's a, it's a high mountain reservoir, essentially, right? Yeah. And um, night fishing can be spectacular for the bigger bite. And yeah. so I'm out there with an old school storm chug bug, the big one, in yeah. black, jet black, and I'm freaking, I am crushing the smallies dude i catch a walleye on a storm chug bug in poland run cove dude, it's like yeah. it's a big one and i'm like a walleye on a top water then i caught like a 21 inch smallmouth, and i'm holding this smallmouth, and dude he like busts out of my hands and knocks my rod into the water he's gone and i'm like my rod the smallie everything's gone i'm like what the fuck just happened I looked down the carpet and my chug bug is stuck to my carpet. I pulled my rod up. So, oh, I mean, I'd measure the fish, you know, but I, then I got, he really wanted to get back in the water, but it was spooky at night, man. It's kind of weird. It got foggy. I couldn't really yeah. see. I had to use my GPS to get back, but uh, I love night fishing. I haven't done it in a while, man, but up there, way bigger bites at night, way it's bigger incredible. bites, double jointed jitter bug. It's before Whopper Plopper came out. I'd be throwing a Whopper Plopper now. Yeah, it, it's it's incredible because you see so many species that night. Yeah. Like I mean, we caught some big northerns doing this too. Oh wow! Um, and that's I hate that. I hate northerns in the first place just because I Me caught too. so many and they just yeah. steal so many of my lures. Yeah. But at night, I don't want to mess with them. I, no. Treble hooks and teeth, no thanks. Dude, that's but, funky, man. It, yeah, yeah. smallies and treble hooks are a funky proposition, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. When me and Travis tried to catch fifty in an hour, I was throwing that flap slap. You know, that little GG Gill right there. Yeah. That dude was bad, man. Those hooks were, that hook was red when I started at. But anyway, I was like, man, they, I, I think I caught 50 the day before, man. You talk about, we pounded. I'm like, you know, we probably shouldn't go back to the same spot, but it was so loaded. <laughs> but I wailed on those fish, man. I was oh getting two, God. three strikes. And yeah, it's funny cool. that they wanted that bait. They did not want that freaking um, pointer. 100 that he was throwing i i didn't understand it they were just tuned into that bait next day they were eating it i wish i had like a white one because it was overcast versus sunny and that yeah. gg gills got that flash flashy baits yeah. in the clouds i would have thrown more of muted color like a white yeah yeah but they love that profile man so it's so interesting yeah it I is isn't it that you mentioned a walleye too at night yeah there's a we my buddy um so like my buddy nate voice the same guy that we won that tournament with he yeah he, he liked him and my brother would go out bow fishing. Yeah. And I would just go out because I was bored. I didn't really have any interest in shooting carp. I was like, that's boring. Sure. Bring sure. a rod and go fish. Yeah. I'd also be their headlight guy. So I would spot him for him. Oh, and nice. dude, we were going through and my buddy goes, There's a fish right there. I see the eyes. And like he pulls back and I look at him, I'm like, dude, don't shoot, don't shoot. And he goes, What do you mean? I'm like, it's a walleye. Like there's walleye <laughs> swimming around on top. Like what? they were they were hunting. It was it was nuts. That's crazy, man. And yeah. Shot water. Like yep. Three to That's five. how I caught that one on the top water. I never heard of a top water walleye. It's I, I want like obviously I'm sure you know bait fish probably relate to to structure at night. Maybe that yeah. shallow water is their their structure. Yeah. I want to dive deeper into at night what makes them move up. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't know. I don't know, man. Them crawfish I know on my lake that the one I was referencing, a lot of crawfish in the shallows at night. You could go like what? you won't see them in the day. But at night, you shine that light down by the dock, and there are crayfish everywhere on the bank. And i that's why those smallmouth come in to eat the crayfish. Minnows, I'm not sure. I, I was really focused on the crawfish because I'm like, oh, dude, I want to catch some and cook them. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
didn't have much luck doing it that way, but uh, <laughs> I caught one. Yeah, I did put him in the gumbo. It was good. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. I wonder because like because crawfish they like that colder that colder cl- like feel to it. So that's probably why yeah. they're under rocks when the sun's out. Yeah, Maybe that's when you know sun's not out. They feel like they can roam around. That's right. And they, they're feeding too. They got to feed, right? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm. You know, I'm not sure what they're feeding on. You know, yeah. crawfish uh, catches a minnow. I don't know. It's some biologist on here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Who Who cares? They're in the shallow and they're exactly. walking around at night. Exactly. Just call them out. They're coming up to eat those jokers. Exactly. Yeah. And that's all we <laughs> care about. As long as Hell, doing, we're doing. Heck it. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Don't need to know why. They're just there. <laughs> Dude, there's so many questions. Like, I would love to get a bi. Like, one of the things I've actually been looking at is getting a biologist on here and asking certain bass behavioral questions. Yeah. Not really what I love that I feel like a lot of people would enjoy listening to that. I Just think so too. Things. You know, I I listen to a podcast on crayfish, a biologist that oh. understands crayfish activity, and so here's a tip: during the full moon, crayfish spawn. So that's when the jig bite can be extraordinary. Huh. There you go. How about that? Did you ever know that? Okay. And here's the other thing I'm going to do I'll with Travis. This down. <laughs> yeah, I pitched a story idea to Travis, like for for a YouTube vid coming up. As I, you know, I make my own stuff. I tie my own jigs. I got. I'm yeah. I'm a fur and feather guy. I've got some wacky chatter baits that you know I'll pull the silicone, uh, you know, uh, stuff off it and throw feathers and fur and you know yeah. synthetic material. They're pretty badass. So you know I've got one that has like a magnum zonker strip on the back. I've just wrecked some bass with that thing, man. It's just sick in the water. It moves natural fibers. There's nothing like it. Man-made stuff cannot compete. Anyway, so um, I said, let's get a crayfish trap because he guides on the upper bay. And I go, aren't you curious? What are the colors of the crayfish? You don't catch many crayfish. Sometimes you do. Yeah. You'll pull one up or a bass will spit one up. So there's there's a lot of different colors up there. But I want to see, or any lake that we go to, put the trap out overnight, catch the crayfish, look at them, and then make a jig skirt that mirrors it and color it up with some, you know, dye markers and stuff. So if they're black and orange, black and red, yeah. green pumpkin, are they more brown and orange? Let's do it. Let's try to match the hatch and see if we do better. But during the full moon and see if the theory with, you know, crayfish behavior and matching the color actually matters on a bass fishery. Huh. Yeah. He's like, I'm doing it. I'm like, we'll do it. Because I have this little mobile like jig making skirt. I did an Instagram video one time. I was waiting for my buddy to show up and he gave it to me. And I'm like, dude, he gave me some skirt material. I have a bunch at home because I tie my own, but he gave me like a bag of stuff and I made a bunch of skirts up. In fact, I did it for Scooter. I made some skirts up for a chatterbait that I make. And uh, we went out and we were on our, you know, uh, Kerr, Bugs Island Reservoir. And had a tournament the next day, and man, in practice, he went to work with that chatterbait, and it was just stupid. Oh, stupid, yeah. We had to stop fishing. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, it's like practice, like, what are we doing? We're leaning on the fish, we're done. We had yeah. patterned them. We could run the pattern across the lake. It, it was wild just to see how they reacted to that. What's that? It's so hard not to. Like I not- know, man, I know. I know, oh. I know. I did these Wednesday nighters with a buddy of mine, and we'd go practice a couple hours before they started. It was a three-hour deal. You know, it was like 5.30 to dark. Yeah. And, um, dude, we were crushing them. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? We're done. It was a grass fishery at the time because the grass was really good in the Gunpowder River. And I'm like, well, let's go get a, a bite to eat, and we'll come back. Man, we came back and the tide continued to rise. It was an incoming tide and a storm was coming. The fish were still active. I had to put three trailer hooks on my buzz bait because they were short striking. They were engulfing it on lower tide, but they were reluctant to come up with a foot or you know more or a foot and a half more water because it's a three foot tide swing. And uh, it's wild, man. We needed a subsurface deal, but that that bite evaporated. So. Yes. You know, was it that we leaned on them or the tide change? That's the difficult part with tidal water. You know, three hours later, the tide's halfway in and more yeah. water over their head. So they were not coming up. They were short striking that buzz bait. So I put it, I had a trailer hook on. Then I put two on. Then I put three on. I caught one bass on the third trailer hook. Is that stupid? That's nuts. It's nuts. Three trailer hooks. Who's what? ever heard of that? I'm not joking. I've never heard of that. <laughs> oh, I've read a story about it, man. A, a guy was like, yeah, I don't even know what magazine, but, you know, the guy's like, sometimes you got to have two trailer hooks. 
Sometimes you put three. I just kept putting them on. It's like a daisy chain behind it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Most guys just keep casting and be like, why are they missing it? That kind of thing. Yeah. They would think to put another one on. But yeah. that, that would be a nightmare of if they swallowed that whole thing. Oh, my God, right? Yeah, exactly. But I they was, literally were short striking it so bad. Uh, we were yeah. still getting the blow-ups. But, you know, you only needed three vasts. So one yeah. was a third of what we needed. And then we went to flipping docks and we did better. So, yeah. Yeah, it, we had to adjust. Yeah, I've never been into buzz baits too much. I need to use. Oh my god! I mean, I know, I know. One, of your, one of your questions was, uh, you know, sponsors. I don't really have any sponsors. I don't. I don't search them out. Don't look for them. Yeah, I'm just kind of want to fish what I want to fish, right? Not be locked in. 100%. But one of my one of my partners. This is really weird. So the partner that remember how I met Scooter. Yeah, you know, down at the Chowan River, Carolina. Brian Breesmeister can't show up for practice, so I hire Scooter. So while we're out talking, catching, we caught, I think our bag was 27 pounds that day. I caught the big fish of the day, last cast of the day, drop shotting. So he's like, he's throwing 30 pound braid. I'm throwing 10 pound test against a cypress tree with barnacles. <laughs> and he's like, you're a nut. And I thought the fish was so long. I'm like, that can't be a bass. I thought it was a mud fish. And it, and it was a bass, like seven and change. And oh so, but during the day, we're talking about buzz baits, and he goes, "Yeah, there used to be this buzz bait called a chatter buzz, man. I can't find him anymore." And I'm like, "What if I told you my buddy Brian, who I'm fishing with tomorrow, is the owner of the chatter buzz?" <laughs> and he goes, "Get out!" So the guy from Chatter Buzz died, and Brian used to fish him too, and he went to uh, the daughter of the man who passed away, the founder of it, and bought the remaining stock. And so he makes, yeah, so it's a buzz bait that basically, uh, I think I got one over there somewhere. It, it clacks on the head. So you yeah. can adjust the blade to make it silent or clack. Huh. It's compact. It's got, a, it's got a head that comes through grass, and you'll really love it. It comes through grass really, really nicely. And in fact, on, on one of Travis's YouTube vids at Costa, not this last year, but the year before, he was practicing north and really not doing much on the hardcover because he was trying to go the road less traveled and i was fishing my wednesday nights and i was cleaning up like first second or third almost every week with my buddy jimmy and um i was kind of tuned into this buzz bait bite and frog bite you know it's a, it's a grass fishery and the grass was yeah. healthy and the fish were loaded in the grass and i'm like dude why are you fighting this grass you gotta come and so he goes come out with me i said all right I have my Wednesday nighter. I'll fish with you during the day. We'll film, and then I'll go and fish my Wednesday nighter. In fact, Travis jumped in that Wednesday nighter. I think we came in second that night. So we went into a cove that was loaded with grass. It's a great pre-spawn cove. The fish live there all summer after they spawn. And uh, I gave him one of the chatter buzzes. And it was black and yellow. And he goes, what is that color? I'm like, dude, trust me. We, as soon as we got into the grass bed, you could hear the bluegills popping. I'm like, hear that? That black and yellow, that yellow belly, kind of on a blue. Oh, it freeze. Oh, We're done. Yeah. Oh, did we freeze? Oh, you're good now. Anyways, yeah. So I turned him on to that chatter buzz, and he he came in third that tournament uh, out of that cove, and it was pretty cool, man. There were two distinct grass lines. There was some really nice high drill in in coontail. I'm sorry, milfoil and coontail. Yeah. And I taught him how to kind of read the grass, and it was uh, he mashed up on him pretty good, man. It was a, uh, and he had it to himself. I couldn't believe it. I mean, with that many boats on the river in Acosta, to have an area to yourself is unheard of. It was a sleeper, man, because those fish are very tide specific in that cove. They want water coming over their heads. They don't love it at super low tide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that chatterbuzz is pretty cool. I'm trying to think if I got one, man. I probably got one hanging around here somewhere. One of the rooms in your house, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no, I, I I remember. Oh, hold on. You got a sec? I'll go get yeah, it. Yeah, I'm out. I am free. All right. I was just doing some reorganization in here, man. I, I, that's probably why I can't find it. <laughs> Literally going to put up some stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'll have to send you one, man. Because uh, I got a bunch of them. That's pressure. That's oh, pressure. wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, he's found it. I got him. Yeah. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Aha! Did he find it? Oh, yeah. I might have to make one. <laughs> oh, boy. It, this is my box. But anyway, I'll show you. Yeah, it's my... I can make any color I want. Just oh. put, it, put it together. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But I'll show you the I'll show you the head. The head design is really nice, man. Oh, here you go. I got one made up, but I don't have a skirt on it. No big deal. That's one thing I kind of like doing in the in the early spring, like a chatterbait too, is throwing it that naked without a skirt. Oh yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. Putting putting like a swim bait on it. Yeah. So there you go. See how the blade yep. is right over the head. Yeah. And then you can you can adjust it, you know. So there's no there's nothing happening there. Yeah. And then um I'll also switch out the the uh what you call it. <laughs> Hear it? Yeah, it's loud. Cool, right? Yeah, yeah so anyway, class That's what you want, right? You want that higher squeak? Yeah, yeah. But what I do, I do a couple things like and I and I showed this on the video. I'll put a bead on the front to keep the grass out, like a brass bead. Yeah. I'll rough up this arm, you know, this part of the arm before I put the blade on with a pair of pliers. And then I'll take the uh, I buy uh steel rivets, not stainless oh. steel, and okay. I put them in a salt solution to rust them. What? Yeah. Okay. And so I put a rusty river. That's why Travis is like, why are you giving me this shitty buzz bait with a rusted river? And I go, dude, I do one on purpose. Because it, it makes it squeal right out of the gate. Because you know how over time a buzz yeah. bait will start to squeal more the more you use it. Yep. I want that squeal right out of the gate. And then the other thing I do is I open the hole in the blade with a pair of scissors. I've done this one. I can see that. The hole in this, this side of the blade and the hole in this yep. side of the blade, I want it flopping more. So yeah, when you have a bigger hole, it just gets it just gets really super squeaky. Yeah, man, I like to I, I tune that shit up. I was always curious why they had holes in them, and that now I know why. <laughs> yep, yep, makes sense. You yes. see, like, there's a bunch of different baits I'm so naive towards. It's like like a buzz bait. I I don't. I think I own two. Maybe. Oh shit, dude! You, it's a tool you have to have. I know. Yeah, I because know. they really do stroke it, man. They stroke. It's, it's one thing I need to, to test out a little bit up here yeah. in New York. Uh, oh, in the Grass Lake, man, buzz bait fishing. Yeah. <laughs> you I, know, I black with a gold blade or silver with a white blade, man, that's all you really need, honestly. Yeah, yeah it's it's just one thing where it's like I try to throw in different stuff. I, I guess, like, my buddy throws uh, buzz baits a lot. He doesn't have much luck with them. Yeah. So he's throwing around grass pockets, and I'll throw, like, a mag spook around pockets of grass. Oh, yeah. Like in Cayuga, and I get destroyed. I probably had 23, 24 pounds in an hour, and he wow. maybe had 12 pounds. Yeah, well, just, I can't argue with that. I yeah. would not throw a buzz bait. If, I mean, honestly, smallie fishing, that might be a different story. Yeah. They love that stupid spook and that black Sammy, man. I mean, good night, dude. Right? Well, in Cayuga, it was, it was a largemouth up in the north. And that's oh, what, you're talking largies. Yeah. 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 He would, what we were doing is what happens is, um, there, it, when the grass grows up, it grows up so fast in certain points where it just ends up matting up. So you have yep. these big grass mats that are around, and guys will throw. Like my buddy throws a, a buzz bait around it. Sure. But instead, instead, like I was trying to change up, throw something different. I've always thrown a spook or a popper. Yeah. Um, and I just threw a mag spook around the edges of it, and he would mm. catch like, a couple two pounders, but I would get less bites, but I would get destroyed yeah. on on this spook. Like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the spook it's not is a spook bite. I just love it. I don't know what it is about it. any any walking bait like that. Sammy spook. I, I love a jackal bonnie. It kind of yep. sits down more vertical. Yep. The black bonnie. I've I've done some work on the upper bay with that thing, man. Around grass pockets and edges, you know, because yep. that's what I fish is grass fisheries, man. And you get bigger bites. That's a fact, Jack. You don't yep. get as many, but you get bigger bites. Yep. No question. Full well, size spook. Is... What is mega? Is it mega bass? Is it the dogfish or something like that? It's uh the dog X. Yeah. Dog X. Giant dog X. Okay, those things are huge. Yeah, they're they're oh. big. Oh, they got another one that's like a monster, like uh, Big Bass Dreams. Oliver yeah. and I, he's throwing that thing. That thing is a mega, mega walking bait. And then you've got the, the freaking um, what the hell is that? The lunker punker. Those oh, are giant. Shit. Have you ever seen the lunker punker? 
I've heard of it. Black I, dog face. Hold like. on, man. G- give me a second. I, I'll All show right. you. All right. Face giant, dude. I mean, it's like a striper bait. Sheesh. I mean, look at the size of this thing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> look at that thing. That is huge. Yeah. I mean, look, it's crazy, right? Yeah. It's a giant, yeah. man. I mean, that's the California guys show that lunker punker for those big, you know, trout eaters. But yeah. I mean, you chuck that bait out there, man, where there's a blue back herring bite going on, or oh my god, big yeah. shad bait, man. Dude, you got it. I mean, if you're looking for a double digit, yeah, right. Yeah. Not saying a five or a three won't eat it. They'll eat it. They're they're predators, man. Oh yeah. Bad little mom, you know, they'll 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 suck it down. Ain't no question. Those like six inch poppers too. Like you see guys using uh, for for GTs stuff. Yeah. Like that. Giant guys use something. those up here for pike. Oh yeah. That's oh what, yeah. It's it's kind of interesting. Well, isn't isn't that how the whopper plopper kind of the guys were throwing it for musky the big musky baits with the back tails. Oh, yeah. Thing? Yeah, and yeah. Dahlberg, you know, basically the big plopper, the 130. Think of it, that's a big bait. Yeah. You know, that gets big bites. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying the 90 won't get a big bite, but that, yeah. that 130. I've had way more success on a 130 than I have a 90. Oh, I love throwing the 130, man. Yeah. That's a big fish bait, bro. I yeah. honestly haven't heard of many people, and not a lot of people like the 90s. I think the only person I've seen do well with the 90, I don't mm-hmm. know if you watch his YouTube channel, but it's a ND kayak angler. No, from North Dakota, he fishes a lot of creeks and streams. Dude, oh, yeah. I've not looked at it. If oh. you see the most insane topwater blowups with smallmouth, yeah, the most crazy things. Yeah, one of his videos got over a million views. What? Yeah, it's insane. What's it, it's ND? Just, what ND kayak? ND, so ND like Notre Dame, and yeah. it's yak yak angler. Okay, I'm gonna watch him. Dude, it it is nuts. I love it, man. I love a big blow up. That's nuts. That's pretty much all it is. It's wow! Giants, giants on that's top crazy. water, yeah. Million yeah. views. That's nuts. You you'll watch them and you'll rethink everything about North Dakota. I mean, he does a little bit of Minnesota too, but sure. He, a lot of it's like ND, you know, North Dakota. So you don't yeah. think that's bass fishing up there when you see it, and you're like, huh? Funny. How okay. about that? Yeah. That's nuts, man. <laughs> yep. Cool, cool stuff, yeah, man. Pretty sweet, yeah. Oh, dude, I think we could probably talk about a bunch of stuff for. Oh, we no already, we're already over an hour, so it's, it, it's, it doesn't it's, feel like it. But all right, <laughs> yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. We're gonna have to get you on again and, and do more of this this oh, bait talk, to do it, man. Happy to do it, man. Love talking bait, yeah. man. One hundred percent. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna do my my fun questions at the end for you. Sure. And then uh, we're definitely gonna get you back on because cool, I am having a blast. Yeah, me too, dude. I love this kind of stuff, man. It's what yeah. I live for. Yeah. Before before we get into that, um, you know, is there any big plans coming up with uh, you and Travis? Any big any big trips or anything? Yeah, yeah, we're trying to get a twenty four hour uh, fishing head to head battle going on the uh, St. Lawrence. So we'll see if we can get uh, we can get that going, man. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, it would be cool. Twenty four hours of fishing, that'd be nuts. I've never done it. Like you versus Travis, kind of thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to tell him, man, look, you're going to be sitting up there on the panoptics, man. Just, you know, take the trophy right out of the gate, dude. I'll do my best, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I usually do pretty good behind him, man. I'll bring some tricks out that I ain't telling him about until we get there. But uh, yeah. that will be fun just to see, you know, what it would be like to fish for 24 hours. So, yeah, you know, That's- it. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, up in May. So we're so we've got some Chester County bass tournaments coming up that we want to fish together. Legends of the Bay is another series that we're trying to do. He's busy. I'm busy with my tournament schedule. Um, you know, there's I think there's a lot of content we can do before he starts to guide really hard in March, you know, trying to figure out some of that early spring bite, late winter. Depends on the water temp, water quality, you know, mm-hmm. how good the grass does, but there's a lot of hard cover stuff going on. So going up there and exploring some of that. Some of that bite with him would be a lot of fun figuring things out. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I've got some ideas brewing. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'm looking forward to it. Just as, as a viewer, I, I'm really looking forward to watching that 100%. Me too. Yeah, we're doing the knucklehead, uh, you know, kind of podcast now. Hopefully get some better internet here going. So it was, it was all me in the yeah. beginning, but I stepped up. So I told him, I'm like, dude, you got to get faster speed. You yeah. know, <laughs> MBS doesn't do it anymore, man. You got to get like 500, man. Yeah. You know, because yeah. he's, I, I, I don't know, he's the guy controlling the feed right now. So yeah. it's really going to be on his machine. 
to, to, yeah. to make it clear. So, yeah, so we're going to I think we're going to pick out some old videos. Uh, and I said, let's just go back to the first time we fished together, dude. It's that epic day on the water. And then yeah. a week later, we did it again. It's crazy. Oh, it's crankbait fest, too. I yeah. mean, I did mix in the chatterbait, but it's all about the crankbait. And I think I caught a good smallie on a jig. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I was throwing different crankbaits and, you know, bringing some old school baits out. And some of those old school baits, man, I don't know why they work, but they just do. They just do. Don't they ask do. questions. <laughs> don't ask questions, man. You know, when you watch the bait in the water, you see it's got a little bit lazier action, like the rattling fat wrap. I don't know why those tidal water fish love that thing. Early spring, cold front, they just eat it. They huh. just do that flat A too. That's just a that's just a money bait. The old one knocker 1970s bombers that you know have a screw tail. It's yeah. It's just a denser plastic. It was made in the 70s. You know, it's not the cheap Chinese stuff you're getting. It's just it's got a different resonance. The new baits catch them too. Bomber six seven A is you know yeah. one of the storied legendary crankbaits of all time. Yeah, I, I love those 1970s versions. They just something different about them, like the old wiggle warts. Yeah, you know, mold was imperfect. It made that bait hunt, and the new ones will catch them too, but the old ones can't be beat. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to sit down for hours and pick your mind on crankbaits too, because I feel like a kid in a candy shop just trying to figure out what all this stuff means. Like I know yeah. we talk about like brands and baits and stuff, but it's like I've never thrown this crap before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you don't need a ton of them. I mean, there's some really like staple baits. You know, you want a crankbait that you can burn that's going to track true. Uh, you know, you can't beat a Rapala DT. As an overall, if I could pick one crankbait, it's made out of balsa. It's cheap enough to buy. It's not a $15 bait. Um, you know, it's just money. The DT4, DT6. I wish they had a DT8 because mm. when they step up from the DT6 to the 10, it's such a bigger bait. So mm. yeah, I, I'd love to see them make an 8. They won't do it, but... Uh, yeah. In any event, I've got the baits that, you know, fill that void in the eight-foot range, yeah. too. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We're going to have to get to talk about this again. But before before we wrap up, I have yeah. two questions that I like to ask everybody. Yeah, sure. Uh, and I'm really intrigued because you have such a wild, crazy, creative mind that I can't yeah. wait for these answers. Um, and the first <laughs> question is, if you could invite any three people to sit down, have dinner, pick their brain, mm. whether past or present, doesn't yeah. have to be fishing, who yeah. would you invite? Wow, man. That's a great question. Damn, who do I really admire? Mm -hmm. Man. Just... If it was fishing for three hours, who's been one of those stories? Well, I'd, I'd love to sit down with like a, you know, I, I don't want to say like, I loved my time with Larry Nixon, man. Yeah. Because he's been a grinder, so I already had that actually on the boat with him. So that that's why I, uh, that's what got me into that bidding on those things. I I don't even know how I found it on eBay. I think I read it in Bassmaster magazine, and I'm like, I've read about Larry Nixon from when I was a kid. Yeah. So so to fish with a legend of the game who's still fishing today. Yeah. Right. He's been through some health things recently, but just to hear the stories about the grind that is professional bass fishing. You know, yeah. to have him talk about joints that have no cartilage left in his body because of the repetitive casting. Think about it, in a tournament, we cast, what, a thousand times? Oh, and then God. to do that over a practice tournament, drive to the next tournament, do it all again. Yeah. Uh, but just to hear him talk about, and, you know, I showed up with a Ned rig, and he was, like, tripping out. And I had the JDM head that he had, you know, out of Japan. And he's like, where'd you find that? And I'm like, dude, I'm a bait geek, so... You know, and then I had a little Super Spook Junior on. He had one on. I'm like, what? And I had a buzz bait, and he had a buzz bait. And I'm like, this is crazy, man. I picked the same three lures you did. That's nuts. Now, to be fair, <laughs> I was out fishing the day before with a guy I hired. Uh, Dell, he's a guide on the lake, because I was going to yeah. be there for a few extra days. I only had a half day with Larry. So that was really cool for me, man, to fish with somebody who I respected, who taught me basically how to worm fish. And, you know, think about it. A plastic worm arguably is one of the best baits ever made for bass fishing. It still works today. Everywhere. Some of those old school worms work today. You know, I just went through my Zoom U-tail box. I haven't thrown a Zoom U-tail in forever. Why did I get away from it? I don't know. But yeah. I got that box looking right. It's going back in the boat, and I'm going to see, does a Zoom U-tail still catch them? I bet it does. Something about the shape of that tail that just, it's a great bait. But no, it's really cool to, 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 to meet Larry and do that. So yeah. 
Yeah. So, so Larry would be one of them. Um, you know, there's a spiritual road that I'm on right now, you know, trying to figure out the second stage of my life. And uh, so who do I respect in that regard, man, to figure out the next path? Man, that's a that's a tough one. Nobody comes to mind right now. Oddly enough, I was watching. Uh, I know you're going to laugh, man. I sat down with my wife because she watches it every Sunday. Super Soul Sunday with Oprah Winfrey. Oh. And they were really talking about everything spiritual. And it was really kind of a cool thing. So not that I would sit down with her, but she had a couple guests on today. I got to get their names because yeah. I might sit down with one of those people. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. Soul Sunday. Something to feed your soul because, uh, you know, I think about the business that I'm in and what I've done in business and, you know, how much time and energy I've put into building a business and working in the, the, the business that I work in the staffing industry for man since 87. But all the while I had this secret passion of bass fishing and I didn't pick that path. You know, you're wearing a Douglas rods hat and you know, if I could turn the clock back, would I've taken that path? Was that the path that I was meant to be on? You know, have I lived this bass fishing life before and in a prior life? I don't know, dude. Yeah. Was I a fisherman somewhere? What is that draw and connection to the water? You yeah. know, so, yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, and then I'm thinking about, you know, giving back. I was at the Ike Foundation Scholarship Dinner mm -hmm. with Travis recently, and uh, I bid on a, on a trip with Ike. And there was a couple calling in from Texas that was bidding against me. And people were like shaming me, like it's a husband and wife trying to fish with a man. The, my table was like, stop bidding, stop. And I'm like, all right, I'll stop bidding. So I lost. And then Becky Iaconelli came over and she said, look, do you still want to do a day with Ike for the same last bid you had? And I go, are you kidding me? I came here to donate because I want to give back. Life's been good to me. Yeah. And I want to give back because, you know, they give scholarships to kids. They get them involved in fishing and it's for future education for kids that can't afford it. So there's that. So I, I can't wait to talk to Ike about his journey in fishing and what he's doing with the foundation okay. and having a, a, a deeper meaning. Because there's kind of that, I don't want to say there's a void in my life. Sure, with bass fishing, because I want to do it more. I love talking to you today. I yeah. love shooting content with Travis. Yeah. Um, you know, I get to explore my passion. So, you know, I wasn't on social media at all. I just rejected it for years. And at 56, somebody's like, dude, you at least got to have an Instagram. I'm like, all right, already. So all right. I'll do it. Twist my fine, <laughs> fine. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of found it because now I'm having conversations with people I've, I've never met. Yeah. And uh, some that I've recently met because they came to the shows, the bash shows that I was at. And so it's really filling that void, um, you know, but there's a deeper void and I'm trying to figure that one out. Right. So having conversations with, you know, where is that that larger purpose than you? Larger than bass fishing, obviously. I've raised a family. Yeah. I built a business. And now what's what's the next act in my life? So That's I don't awesome. know who that person is going to be for me unknown, but maybe it's one of Oprah's guests. I don't know. On Super oh, Soul yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe going back, you know, did you ask me three people? Three. Yeah, three. <laughs> was, was it three? All right. I think I only said two. But three. It's up to you. No, no, no. And then somebody going back in time. Um, man, like to the early roots of the country, maybe, you know, like, okay. I don't know, man. Like one of the founding fathers. I've gotten Abraham Lincoln a bunch. Yeah, yeah. I would say maybe, I don't know, one of those guys on the Constitutional. Teddy board. Roosevelt was a big one. I got a lot. A lot of our outdoor guys. Yeah, yeah. right? Bully. Wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bully. Bully. Yeah. <laughs> he had the bully pulpit or something? I don't know. Yeah, oh, Ernest Hemingway, man. Hemingway. Yeah. Hemingway. Hemingway. Okay. I like Hemingway. that. Yeah. One. Hemingway would be really cool because he was the, you know, or maybe even Jack London. You I know, know Jack London. Who's Jack London? He wrote Call of the Wild. Oh, I remember oh, oh that the would movie. be cool. Yeah, the movie just came out. So Hemingway probably would be first, but Jack London, maybe an author. Yeah. Say, I, I love Call of the Wild. Yeah, I, man. I, everybody had to read that book, right? Yeah. I and remember crying my this. eyes out, man. I got to reread it, man. I know yeah. I'm going to go to that movie and start crying like a baby. <laughs> I wish they used a real dog. I don't know if the you know fake dog's gonna get me like worked up, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So yeah, it's. It, I feel bad for the kids and the younger generation that have no idea what we're talking about right now. Oh no, the connection to the wild and the outdoors and yeah. how it peace feel, man, and the draw to the water and yeah. you know, nature, the planet, and all that. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah I, I recently, it's funny we'd say this, I, uh, earlier today I had on uh, Brian the Carpenter, who's... Oh, I love that guy, man. BTC yeah. is awesome. And that was one of the things we were talking about is like, it feels like, I mean, I, we could be entirely wrong, but it feels like you're getting the, the sense of kids are losing their sense of exploration. Yeah. But they're oh, too busy on their phones, then, then putting their phone in their backpack, telling their mom I'll be home later, and just go oh. explore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. interesting. Yep. I hope, yeah. I hope. So it's nice when you see kids that are into that. Yeah. It's I agree, amazing. man. I agree. I yeah. agree. Oh, and hopefully, you know, there's going to be a return to that, man. I think there's a I, lot of yeah. that younger generation is conscious about our world and our planet and, you know, the natural resources and, and how nature, you know, doesn't really need us. We need it. And yeah. um, how can we preserve that for future and for their lives, you know? 100 percent dude yeah 100 percent. yeah so man my last question before you so i don't keep you for too long tonight my last question is super simple yeah straight to the point your favorite fishing memory oh wow dang that's a great one man huh? Whew. i got so many first one that comes to mind yeah all right so the first one that came to mind was uh I told you, I already told you that story about using that trash bag deal, but, um, yep. so I got, you know, I got, I got a lot of them, but if I only had to pick one, Hmm. We'll have a new one for you each time you come out here. Okay. 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 Cause there's way <laughs> too many, man. There's way too many. So, so I got pretty heavy into JDM tackle for, you know, reading on the forums, buying baits, testing them out, taking them on the water. And so. I've had the 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 pleasure and, and and the gift of fishing with some really super accomplished anglers. And one of the guys that was one of the best crankbait fishermen I've ever met is Bob Cherry. I fished okay. tournaments with that guy. I fished never on Sunday. Uh, we won a lot of tournaments together. He I, I learned a ton about fishing a crankbait because Bob always had a crankbait in his hand. And, you know, one of the best super shallow crankbaits ever made was a minus one. You know, hmm. it's zero to one foot. Uh, man's ruined it by sending the production to China. They changed the mold, but the old vintage minus ones or one minus, um, uh, baby one minus to be specific is just one of the best, you know, if you fish shallow grass, you gotta have a minus one. And when it gets hot, you gotta burn that bait. So me and Bob are on the boat. He's got his favorite minus one on that. He is just the paints worn off. He had it for 20 years. His daughter gave it to him. It's a special bait. In his yeah. mind, and of course, I'm on the back of the boat. I got a bunch of minus ones with me, but I bought this new bait from Japan called, I got one right here. It's an Imakatsu. It's a funky color, so, you know, don't go crazy on the color, but yeah. don't don't sleep on a straight chartreuse or straight orange crankbait. It's an Imakatsu Waddle Bats. Interesting. There's a blade on the bottom. I'll bust it out of the pack for you. So it's the first time I've thrown this bait. First time yeah. I've thrown this bait. And we're going down a bank with shallow wood. Yeah. And, and Bob's throwing the minus one. He's getting prime cast angle at every nook and cranny on every log. Like, he should get the bite before I get the bite. Yeah. And I am stoning the fish behind him. Stoning them. He can't get a bite. I'm catching bass. I caught three snakeheads that day, jumbo snakeheads. He's like, what the fuck is that, dude? And I go, dude, so this blade on the bottom, do you see the blade on the bottom? Yeah. yeah. This makes that bait hunt. It'll come off center and go back and then go out to this way and come back. You can't burn this crankbait. So it's not really a, a, a great bait for the summer when the water gets warm and you have to burn a minus one to get a bite. Yeah. But it was post-spawn. The fish were on the wood. And um, I destroyed them. So I used this size, and then there's a bigger one that they make, and they make a tiny one. But I used the jumbo one after, and, and I just literally caught fish off of every laydown. And, and it's like they'd never seen it before, and in fact, they probably never had. Yeah. And so it just showed me that there are bass where you don't think they are, that a new bait or a new retrieve or some new tactic or technique, some wacky thing that you wouldn't think would work, would work. It was just really cool, man, to like – to like research a bait and figure out that it's got something special and to understand why the hunting action, because hunting action in a crankbait is what everybody tries to build in. You know, mm -hmm. a bait that tracks straight, it's like the chatterbaits that track straight. You got to rip it out or pop it or slowly pulse the rod or that quick, small, 
stop and you retrieve split second and then snap it back and the bait you know it's like a fleeing thing but it's just really cool to ha have a situation where you just see that that different bait made the difference it wasn't something i was doing yeah aside from my research and going i think it'll work and then yeah. testing it and see it side by side with a guy in front that knows how to fish a crankbait that's his yeah. favorite shallow water crankbait and he's not getting bit and to see a bait come through and just get smashed that's it's awesome. crazy it's crazy crazy it's just like light bulb you know? yeah like ding yeah, yeah. exactly exactly awesome. yeah man dude when you you mentioned and i'm gonna add this in quick before we end our, our show yeah. here tonight, sure. but you had mentioned how it's like it's the first thing they've ever seen how could you imagine going to like a fork before man fished and fishing fork oh and my the God. amount of fish and big fish you could catch. That would be like crazy. Like like some of the lakes that they, you know, had closed to the public and then opened for the first time. Eh, man, like stick marsh, I guess, you know, like like lakes that were just coming on and just oh. so fertile. Oh my God, it'd be, it'd be stupid. You'd have a 50 pound bag. Yeah, least. that would be legendary. It would be dumb. It would be oh. dumb. And, and that's cool. But, you know, what I love is a grinder tournament where, you know, there's pressured water, you know, and you're coming behind somebody. There's three boats that just went down that stretch of riprap. And that's why I get off on finding a bait or waiting a bait, like a crankbait, you know, throat waiting something that's just going to sit in the strike zone, you know, pre spawn when the fish are cold or there. They're on those spots where they want to move up right off that channel swing. You know they live there, their community holes, and figuring out something that's going to trigger that bite. That's yeah. what I love. I love doing that more than anything, the grinder oh. of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Respect. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, don't get me wrong, man. I would love to go to Fork when it first opened before yeah. anybody bass fish to just wail on some 10-pounders. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yep. man, I, I got to say, I appreciate you taking the time tonight. Sure thing, it's probably man. the longest podcast I think I've had. And oh. I like the shortest. So it's, Yeah, it truly did, man. Plus the preamble before, man. I was totally yeah. stoked about hearing your journey, man. Congrats on the gig with Douglas, man, because you don't it. think it's not crossed my mind to go like, man, it's not, I, I don't need the money because, um, yeah. you know, I'm later in my career. I'm just doing it for the fun. But here's what I do know. I'm, I'm getting into the industry somehow. And so that's what I want to do, man. I want to make baits. I want to, you know, just for fun. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Travis and I are trying to maybe collaborate on some things that he's going to get connected with bait companies. Uh, he had this idea for a little jig. I can't show you. But, uh, you know, I tied one up, a sample. And he was like, dude, where'd you? And I'm like, dude, that's what I do. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, the crazy chatter baits with fur and feathers, man. Oh, dude. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all good. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, dude, I mean... I would even love to at some point just just get out and fish and show you the rods just to get your opinion. Totally you into that because how much you know would be would be incredible. Yeah, so. I mean, I I was a Shimano man from way back in the day when Loomis first came out. I had a Loomis in my hand, and uh, me and my buddy Alan we we fished together forever. He wasn't much of a spinning rod guy, and um, yeah, man. So uh, I I I love the Loomises, and uh, now that Shimano has purchased them. Um, you know, I've got a conquest. That was kind of cool. Caught a seven on a conquest last year on a little ball head jig with a spark shad and then yeah. pulled out the freaking gang craft joint claw 230, caught a four and a half and scooter. My part is in practice. He's like, dude, you're, you're confusing me. One minute you're throwing a micro jig. The next minute you're throwing this giant swim bait. What are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I just felt <laughs> like the wind picked up and the sun was out. Yeah. That's exactly what I did, man. So no, I would love to fish a Douglas rod. So Heck, I, yeah. I'm, yeah, man. Yeah, let's get out of the water together. Yeah, yeah we'll, never, we'll talk a little bit offline here. Yeah. yeah, never even held one, so be be happy to do it, man. I'd love, love to change that. That would be awesome. Yeah, 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 because I'm all about the feel and the balance, you know, and I pay attention to rods. I had some buddies build some Loomis rods for me with Loomis blanks when you could get them, you know, and he taught me about, you know, rods. Some rods are not splined right. You know, yeah. if you set the hook and the rod's wrenching to the left or right, that means because the guys are not on the center of that thing. It's not balanced and the weight and how it feels. Yeah, sensitivity. Yeah. Yep, yep. Well, well, we'll get into it, man. But, um, dude, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. to back on 
Oh, I'd love just to. Thank you love for to. taking the time and, and hopping on here and oh, Bailey's been knowledge been on not yeah. just, but everybody listening. So I oh man, it. absolutely. It's been my pleasure, man. I, I love it. Thanks for reaching out, man. Of course. I, I appreciate the compliment on the the Insta, you know, and finding me and the, the work yeah. that I'm doing with Travis. I'm having fun, man. Sharing Thanks. the knowledge and, and still learning like crazy. Yeah. yeah. Keep it up. Keep it All up. All right. I, I can speak well. for a lot of people. We love it. So good stuff, up, man. man. Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon, man. Peace. See you Tight later. lines this year. You got it. Bye. You too, man. So I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast. Another really long podcast. So I hope you got your, your worth out of that for the different information, different things we talked about, your entertainment. I know I was entertained. That was awesome. Awesome talking to him. Different stories to, to hear. He's gone through a lot in the industry. He knows a lot of people, seen a lot of stuff, experienced a lot of things. Um, and being a young guy like me, that's – that is something that I yearn for, that I love to listen to, and I'm starstruck when I when I hear it. I just love to to learn as much as I can, um, and he's one to take a lot from. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not already, go follow him on social media. It's down in the description. Go check out Small Mouth Crush, where he works with Travis Manson, making amazing videos, different projects over there. That's also linked down. And lastly, if you're not already, subscribe to Ike Red Outdoors on YouTube. Go down and click that button. And if you don't want to listen on YouTube, you can head over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Angler app, any podcast application, we're on there. So thank you guys for listening, and we will see you next time.